Hi everyone, welcome to Camping 101. This week we are talking about everything that you need to know um, to make your first camping trip simple. I'm Amy Hope with HTX Outdoors and Bayou City Outdoors and I'm going to be going through um, tips, tricks, recommendations, checklists, everything that um, will help make your first camping trip much, much simpler. Because when you start thinking about camping, uh, the list of equipment and things to do and things to have with you gets super long super fast. So we're here to help you figure out the ins and outs and how to make it simple. Um, so if you haven't already, go ahead and go to hxoutdoors.com forward slash camping and download your camping workbook or you can go to the Bayou City Outdoors website and grab your camping workbook from there. The, the workbooks um, between the two sites are pretty much exactly the same except for there might be a, a couple different stories in each one so you can just pick whichever one you want. Um, okay so to get started for day one what we, uh, we want to talk about is you know why do you want to go camping? The, because the reasons that you choose to go camping will help you pick a spot. So, for example, um, if you're looking for peace and quiet and you want to just get away from people, then you're going to want to look for a campsite that's more remote. And different parks around Texas and Houston um, have campsites that are remote that you can get what you're looking for but if you want to be around people let's say you you don't want your first camping trip to be completely by yourself you want others to be around in case you know you need to ask some questions or whatever then all of the state parks have plenty of camping spots um, where you can go and be around people that way you feel more comfortable than being out in the middle of the woods by yourself so what we want you to do is think about why do you want to go camping um, and in the workbook on page three we have a whole list an entire page of questions that you can ask yourself to help you figure out what type of camping you want to do because if you're new to it you may not know exactly what you're looking for so for example um, I just give you one example but um, some of the other questions that we ask is do you want to have a campfire so some parks um, don't allow campfires at all like Big Bend National Park you're not allowed to have a campfire there ever and then other parks that do normally allow you to have campfires um, sometimes there's a burn ban so you want to make sure you're doing research um, because if that's a necessity for you you're gonna want to check out check it out before you make reservations other questions would be like do you want a flushing toilet um, some campsites have bathroom access where they have flushing toilets and running water other campsites have um, just a porta potty type of composting toilet and then some campsites don't have any toilet at all so when you're thinking about camping you know is how important is a toilet to you um, that's gonna help you pick a site and then uh, same thing with the shower some some campgrounds have showers and some don't so how important is it for you if you're just camping one night can you go without a shower if you're camping for four days can you go without a shower um, sometimes if you're close to a clean body of water you know you can use that if you have um, biodegradable soap um, so use the workbook again you can download the workbook at hxoutdoors.com forward slash camping or from the bayoucityoutdoors.com website and go through and answer all of these questions now you may not know all of the answers right now and that's completely okay but what we want to do is we want to start helping you pick a campsite and pick a, a park based on how you're answering these questions so after you've had some time to go through and and answer the questions come back to this Facebook video and in the comment sections let us know what your top priority thing is that you want to do while you're camping and we can give you recommendations about good parks to go to um, so you know another thing to consider that you want to think about is how what's the temperature that you want when you're camping um, for me personally I don't like to sleep I don't like to camp if the 
if the weather is going to be above 70 at night. Um, for me, that's just too warm. I'm uncomfortable. Um, I prefer for the nighttime temperature to be below 70. So when I'm looking at a campsite or an area park to go camping in, um, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm going to check the average historical weather um, for that area to see if the temperatures are, are temperatures that, uh, that I'm going to be comfortable in. And then as far as on the opposite side, I usually like to go down to about 20s or 30s. I'm not a big snow camper. Um, I just haven't done it much. I mean, mainly because I've lived down in the south for a long time, so I've camped down here. But so I'm primarily looking for nighttime temperatures between 30 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit for me to be comfortable at night. Um, so that's going to help me plan which parks I go to in which seasons. For example, this past weekend, um, we just got back from Garner State Park. And Garner State Park tends to be cooler at night than uh, parks that are near Houston because it has a little bit of elevation. It's up in the hill country area. So you can camp there later in the season and still have um, cooler weather at night. Now it does get hot during the day so you also want to look at daytime temperatures and if it's going to be really hot and sunny you want to make sure that your park has um, shady places or places for you to cool down. At Garner State Park for example there's lots of wooded areas um, where you can sit in the shade and there's also the Frio River which is relatively colder water it was pretty warm this weekend because the uh, water level is down and it was really hot during the day. But in general, like it was also very refreshing. That first dip in, you're like, you definitely got cooled off from from sitting in the sun. Um, so, so in the comment section, let us know what types of things are you looking for for your first camping trip. And again, we're gonna help you pick. Um, some campsites and if you don't know right now that's okay as we go throughout the week and we talk about different aspects of camping you'll get a better idea of what you want and you can always ask us at any point in time um, and we'll help you find the perfect camping spots so a couple of things when you're thinking about camping spots a couple of things to think about um, are there are three main types of camping spots there's going to be full RV hookup spots which is where you've got the full, you, you're driving a big RV and you want to connect your water and your sewer to the spot, your camping spot. Then you have electric only spots. Electric only spots, they're not going to have the sewer connections for your RVs, but they're going to have outlets for you to plug things in. And so you can charge your phones or um, plug your RVs in, plug your electric car in. <laughs> um, and then there's water only spots, which is there's only a water spigot there. Now throughout the park, a lot of times they have electricity so that if you did need to charge your phone or charge something, you can find an electrical outlet throughout the park. But at your specific campsite, you only have a water spigot. And then there's primitive spots that usually don't have anything. It's literally just a piece of um, land that you set up your, that's designated for you to set up your tent on. So um, before you reserve any spots, you want to know which of these do you are you know do you want, and the prices vary based on the different camping spites, sites. The primitives are typically the cheapest, whereas the full um, hookup ones are usually the most expensive, and then and then they they vary in between. Um, but usually. Um, most of the state parks and national parks, most of the state parks have all of these options for you to choose from. So when you're on the state park website, you can look at the maps. They all have maps of trails in the park, and you can see which um, which part which parts of the campgrounds are which types of sites. Um, they're all labeled. So when you're reserving your campsite. Um, you can reserve them based on the type of, of campsite that you're looking for. Now one very important thing to, to note when you're reserving your campsites, a couple things about reserving your campsites. The Texas State Parks, for Texas State Parks specifically, um, the, the furthest in advance that you can reserve a campground is 11 months. And some of the parks do actually fill up 11 months in advance. For example, Lost Maples State Park. Um, we booked our 
our camping trip for Thanksgiving this year in December of last year. And literally the day that the sites opened, I got the sites at 8.30 in the morning and they were already half gone. And so just those few hours of being open online, people were reserving them already. So other state parks like Lake Livingston, sometimes it takes a while you know, you don't have to do it exactly 11 months in advance. I think we did it a few months in advance. But they do fill up, and then once the, the weather gets nice, then people remember to go book their camping sites, and so then they usually fill up for the summer. So you want to try, you know, you want to probably start thinking about your fall camping trips now, and that's why we're doing this training in, in May, even though we're probably not going to do much camping in the Texas area until September. But we want you to start um, thinking about what type of camping experience you want and going through the training so that you can go ahead and reserve your spots for the fall. And then that way, when you're ready, all the campsites won't be booked up. Okay, so I have a question. Which other state parks do you like to camp at other than Gardner? Um, you know, I actually haven't been to a state park that I didn't like so far. Um, Huntsville State Park is my one of my favorite places to go. There's trails. Um, there's the lake there. So there's a, a lot of different activities you can do throughout the day, throughout the weekend while you're camping. Um, because that that's another thing you want to think about when you're trying to decide which state park or which park to go camp at is what activities are you going to be doing during the day? Do you want to hike the whole time? Do you want water sports? Do you want a mountain bike? Do you want a road bike? Um, do you want to swim, kayak, stand up paddle board? Do you just want to hang out at your campsite and chill in your hammock and read a book? Or do you want to do a variety of things? Um, you know, so Huntsville State Park is great because you can mountain bike, you can hike, you can kayak. There is a section for swimming, um, but you do want to be careful because there are alligators in the lake. Um, so you, you do want to be careful when you're out there in the water. But it gives you all of those options. Lake Livingston is also really nice for water sports. So you can bring a boat. Um, they have boat ramps. Um, we're going to talk more about specific um, campsites on Friday but um, or camp excuse me, parks and our favorite places, but Lake Livingston is also a great place to go. You can put a boat in, you can kayak, stand up paddle board. There's a little bit of hiking out there, um, and it's kind of, and they, all of the state parks also do, um, they host programs. So, for example, when we went camping in Lake Livingston last month, um, they did a, the state park hosted Birds of Prey. And they did this cool show right in the park and it's free and you just walk over and they brought falcons and eagles and owls and um, actually this cute vulture. It's I forget what the, the name is. There's a turkey vulture, which is the brown ones that we normally see. And then there's this black vulture. I forget the name of it, but it was so cute. It was kind of jumping around like a puppy um, when they when they brought it out. It was just real playful. Um, and it was a, a, a bird um, um, rehabilitation uh, uh, nonprofit that was with the state park helping them out. And and it was really it was really great to see the different birds and the, the rehabilitation that they're doing and just saving the birds. So make sure you're also checking the state parks for what activities they have hosted hosting. So some of them are going to do birds, some of them are going to do guided hikes, um, some of them do ranger talks. Um, ranger Ted does every Friday. He does um, a live video so you can just watch him on Facebook Live and he goes around and talks about different aspects of Huntsville State Park. So that's a great one to look at as well. Okay. Um, national parks. Um, oh, one more thing about reservations. When you're reserving your spot, you usually pick the type of spot, of the water spot or the electric spot, but you don't get to pick your exact site number. The site numbers are first come, first serve. So you're, let's say you book a campsite, you're guaranteed a campsite in the type of site that you booked, but you don't check into an actual site until you get there. And that's very important to know because not all the campsites are the same size. Some of them are small, some of them are large, 
Some of them are next to water. Some of them are next to the bathroom. So in our list of questions, we're asking you these things like, do you want to be close to a bathroom? Some people like to be close to the bathroom because they don't want to walk that far in the middle of the night. Others like to be far away from the bathroom because um, usually the bathrooms have lights that are shining, so if you're sensitive to bright lights at night, you may not want to be there. Some of the bathrooms have motion detecting lights, so every time somebody goes to the bathroom, the light comes on and then it goes off. And then the doors bang and the toilets flush. So, and it's all different. Each state park or each park is different on how loud or busy the, the bathrooms are. So some people like to be close just because they don't want to walk at night and others like to be further away so that it's a little bit more quiet. So our workbook asks you, asks you these questions so that you can uh, know what you're looking for before you get to the park. So the day of your reservation, you want to try to get to the park as soon as possible so that you can pick out of all the campsites that are left and find the best one that you're looking for. Um, it's, a, it's also a good idea, you can also go beforehand and just drive up there and scope out the, the park so that you get a better, I just go for the day and you can get a better feel for which campsites you think you want. That's also a good thing to do. Um, national park um, sites, you usually book those through uh, recreation.gov and a lot of them are first come first serve um, as well so so a lot of them don't even require reservations you you literally just go to the park the day you want to camp and you if they have sites still available then you go camping so it's a little bit easier to do that with just a couple people um, if you have a large group sometimes it's hard because if it happened to be a busy weekend and it fills up then you have a large group of people where you're trying to figure out what, where to go um, but it can be very nice, you know, one, if all the, if all the reserve spots are, are booked already, but you still want to go camping for the weekend, you can go to one of the first come, first serve um, campgrounds and still possibly do a last minute trip. Okay, so that is the quick and dirty on how you want to start thinking about aspects of camping so that you can best choose which park you want to camp in and which campsites um, you want which types of campsites you want to pick so get the workbook so that you can go through I, I just gave you a few examples here of the questions that are in there but it has a lot more detail um, about questions that you should be asking yourself and then we give descriptions of different types of campsites as well so that you can start um, matching your responses to types of campsites. And if you have any questions about which parks are best based on the activities or the features that you're thinking about doing, go ahead and put them in the comment section or you can contact HTX Outdoors or Bayou City Outdoors and we will answer all of your questions. Um, we will be back here tomorrow at noon on the HX Outdoors Facebook page and also the Bayou City Outdoors Facebook page. And tomorrow we are talking about um, how to look like an expert. So we have a full list of tips that we learned either the hard way or we see other people, you know, first time campers, we see them doing something. Um, you know there's not really right or wrong but there's better ways to do things and so we put this whole list together that we're going to walk you through tomorrow so that you know like that the etiquette so to speak of camping and you won't look like you're a first-time camper so join us back tomorrow and we'll see you there thanks so much